In this week's project, I'm going to show you how you can upgrade this into this. This is of course the infamous energy sword from Halo. This cosplay prop is actually made by Mattel and officially licensed by Microsoft. You can find these exclusively at GameStop and I think it's actually a pretty decent piece of kit. It does actually light up but it kind of leaves a lot to be desired. It only has 11 LEDs so the lighting in this thing is kind of underwhelming. So in this project we're going to tear it down and add lots of NeoPixel LEDs. The two blades are joined together with brackets which make the whole piece sturdy enough to swing around. On the back of the handle lies the cover for the batteries and a power switch. It features different modes which can be toggled by flipping the switch. And behind this grill is most likely the speaker. A trigger button fires off the LEDs and sound effects while in a specific mode. I started off by removing the battery cover and then removing the batteries. After that I started removing all the screws in the handle. I also removed the screws from the mounting brackets which hold the blades to the handle. The mounting brackets are in two halves that can easily be separated. Then I lifted the handle off the bracket and separated the two halves of the handle. And here's all of the electronics. On the main board I found two connectors. These are actually the wiring for the LEDs. They were really easy to unplug and disconnect from the PCB. I then unraveled the wiring from the handle and started removing the LEDs. On one of the blades, I found a tilt switch. This is used to trigger the LEDs and sound effects when it's swung around. Next, I needed to remove a bit of glue from the inside of the blade. I pried off the bracket from the blade and carefully removed the inner plate. This clear piece of plastic has engravings and gives that blade that edge let texture. The outer shell of the blade is completely hollow and in one piece. I then removed the tilt switch from the bracket by clipping the standoffs that held it in place. It's soldered to a standalone PCB and has separate wiring so we should be able to reuse it. So I then separated it from the LED wiring. Next I started removing the LEDs from the bottom of the clear plate. This required some snipping since they are fixed in place. Once the LEDs were removed, I proceeded to detach the bottom piece from the clear plate. This would prevent the NeoPixel strips from fitting into the blade, so that's why I removed it. To sort out the power for this project, I put the batteries back in and turned it on. Using a multimeter, I probed the pins on the PCB to see which were power and ground. After I traced these two, I proceeded to remove the PCB from the handle by removing the two screws. And on the back of the PCB is the main switch. I was happy to see some labels here, which helped me verify all the pinouts. The trigger button is also mounted to the PCB. I then traced the pinouts of the trigger button. I'll use this to cycle between different animations for the NeoPixels. An Adafruit trinket fitted nicely in an empty spot on the handle. So here's how I'll wire the power into the trinket. I'll connect the voltage and ground from the PCB to the pads on the back of the Adafruit trinket. I then cut up two pieces of wire and used a pair of wire strippers to remove a bit of insulation. I tinned the exposed tips by adding a bit of solder and wired them to the power and ground pads on the back of the Adafruit trinket. Then place the trinket into the handle and started connecting power and ground to the corresponding pins on the PCB. I put the batteries back in and did a quick power test. The trinket powered on and we should be able to power up to two NeoPixel strips using the three AAA batteries. I grabbed a strip of NeoPixels and started measuring how long they needed to be by lining them up with the blade. I was able to fit 43 NeoPixels per blade, a total of 86. So I cut up the strip using a pair of scissors and removed the connectors on the end. The sheathing didn't allow the strip to fit into the blade, so we won't need it. These flexible breadboard PCBs are awesome for these projects that require a lot of power and ground connections. And since there's only a few on the trinket, a small piece will go a long way. I proceeded to tin the pins on the flex PCB by adding a bit of solder. Then I connected a short wire to one of the pins. I connected this wire to the ground pin on the Adafruit trinket. Next I can work on the connections for the trigger button. I'll need two more wires, one for ground and the other for signal. Connected one wire to pin number two on the Adafruit trinket and the other to the ground on the flexible PCB. Then the trigger pin on the switch PCB to pin number two. I also connect the ground wire here. I put the PCB back into the handle and fastened the two screws to mount it back into place. Next I started working on wiring the power to the flex PCB. I connected a wire to one of the rows and wired that to the 5 volt pin on the Adafruit trinket. I repeated this step for the NeoPixel data connection, wiring it into pin number 0, 
of the Adafruit Trinket. Now I can work on connecting the NeoPixel strip by cutting some longer pieces of wire. I stripped, tinned, and connected them to the three pads on the NeoPixel strip. I made sure to wire it to the correct direction, going through data in. Then I fitted the blade by inserting it in through the opening. I slipped it through the whole blade and put it off to one side. I grabbed the clear plate and fitted that back into the blade, making sure to avoid dislodging the NeoPixel strip. I then carefully popped the mounting bracket back into the blade and made sure the wiring was kink free. The tilt switch fit right back into the bracket as well, I just needed to add some mounting tack to hold it in place. I reassembled the mounting bracket for the blade and fit the handle back by laying it over the corresponding standoff. The wires fitted nicely through the harness on the handle and I proceeded to connect them to the flex PCB. I connected ground to ground, power to power, and data to data. A piece of mounting tack will secure the flex PCB to the handle. I repeated this process for the second blade and started reassembling the mounting parts. A piece of tape helped keep the wire secured and contained within the handle. And that's pretty much all of the wiring. Now I can go ahead and close up the handle. I put the remaining bracket back onto both of the blades and secured them to the handle. Flipped the whole thing over and now I can start inserting all of the screws back into place. And lastly, I fitted the two blades back together and fastened the last remaining screws. Finally, I flipped the switch and gave it a test drive. So the code used in this project is from the button cycle sketch from the Adafruit NeoPixel library. For a full tutorial on how I built this project, check out the learning guide linked in the description. I'm really impressed with the design of this prop and I'm surprised how hacker friendly it was. This could definitely be modified to have even more functionality. This was a fun project to work on and I hope you've gained some insights on how you can upgrade your projects. Hey, if you like this build, let me know by giving it a share and a thumbs up. And if you want to see a fully 3D printed Halo Energy Sword, check out the video linked in the top right card. Thanks so much for watching, and for more DIY projects, be sure to subscribe to the Adafruit channel. Also, don't forget to check out the playlist for past projects. <laughs>